Hello everyone, now we are all set to train our model. In the last tutorial, when we are going through cropped images, we couldn't find some of the images because we deleted them. Uh, we couldn't find them in our class dictionary. So to improve the code, what I did is, and I'm gonna provide this notebook link in the video description below. But I went through cropped image directory and I scanned those images and rebuilt my dictionary. So this dictionary contains all the valid files now. Okay. And after that, when I reconstructed X and Y, I got 168 images and each image is nothing but an array of 4096 data points. So every image is represented as, as an array like one dimensional list. So it is as simple as that. Okay. Now we are ready to train our model. So we will try support vector machine because support vector machine tends to perform good when it comes to when it, we are talking about classification. We'll just randomly try that. Then we'll try a couple of other models using grid search CV. So, the goal of this tutorial is uh, we first try SVM, look at the performance, then we use grid search CV, try a couple of models, do fine tuning, hyperparameter tuning, and in the end, once we have decided which model we are going to deploy to production, we will export that model in a file. So we'll cover all of that in this tutorial. Okay. So let's first import necessary modules. Okay, so I imported all these modules. And as usual, the first thing is to split X and Y into X train, Y train and so on. You all know about this. If you don't know about this, then follow my machine learning or uh, tutorial playlist. That playlist is a prerequisite for this project. This is a standard practice. We always divide X and Y into training and test set. After that, I'm going to create sklearn pipeline. The reason I'm doing it is because I want to scale our data first. So this is nothing. Actually, it's very simple. You first, whatever X train you're giving, you are scaling it using this standard scalar. You can also use min max scalar. And then in the second step, you are creating an SVM uh, model with certain parameters. Now, don't ask me how I came up with this parameters. I'm randomly choosing this parameter just to kind of get a feel of how my model is performing. I'm going to fine tune these parameters later on using grid search CV. And once you have the pipe created, you can just simply say pipe.fit. And what this fit will do is it will train machine learning model on X train and Y train. And once it is trained, I have this habit of checking the score on X and Y test. So X and Y test, you can check uh, how good your model is performing. And when you execute it, what I find is I find 88% accuracy. So you can see that 88% accuracy you can get even if you're not using neural network so this is kind of good i understand we tested it on only a small sample of x test and y test and you can check what is that sample size so it will we, we tested 42 images basically and on that it gave us 88 person score which is kind of okay if you want to look at the detailed statistics then sklearn has this classification report. So what this classification report will do is it will try to predict using X test. So you get Y predicted and it will compare it with Y test and it will give you different metrics. Zero to four are different classes that we have, right? So what are our classes? So if you look at it, zero is Lionel Messi, Maria Sarapova is one, and so on. And we now have precision re and recall. 
So if you don't know what is precision and recall, you can say, okay, so precision and recall. Just search for F1 score and you will find nice Wikipedia article on it. And that article has information on what is precision and recall. Look, if you are trying to learn data science, machine learning, you need to know about all these terms. Precision and recall. Precision is like, I'm predicting, let's say, let's say there are 10 images and I'm saying these uh, 10 images are of Lionel Messi. And out of that, let's say one image is not Lionel Messi. In that case, my precision is 90% because 90% of time, whatever I'm telling is true, but 1% time I'm making mistake. And recall is something like, you know, this, this article, Wikipedia article gives a nice description, like how many selected items are relevant out of the entire set, positive and negative and how many re, uh, relevant items were selected, like for how many items were able to predict even. And then F1 score is just a score around this precision recall. And you can look, look at all this mathematical formula. Okay, so uh, you can see for every class, uh, you are showing this precision recall. For class and one, two, uh, one and two, my precision is one, which means what is my one and two class? So one and two is Maria Sarapo and Roger Federer. In these cases, it did not make any mistake. So if it said that it's Maria Sarapova, it is Maria Sarapova and so on. So you can read more about this classification report and all, and um, you know, just get understanding on it. Now we'll do grid search CV. So grid search CV is used to hyper tune parameters. For example, here I use RBF and C equal to 10. How do I know that this parameter will give me best performance? There is no good way to know other than trial and error. So what we do is we, we train SVM model on RBF kernel, on linear kernel, on different values of C such as 1, 10, 100 and so on. And we rely on grid search CV to tell us which model is performing the best. And I have a grid search CV tutorial. I highly recommend that you watch that. That tutorial is a prerequisite for this class. So that will give you a good understanding. So in grid search CV, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define different candidate models. What I mean by this is that I have, so I have this different model that I want to try, SVM, Render Forest, and Logistic Regression. And I want to try these models with these parameters. So I want to try SVM first with the value of C being 1, 10, 100, and 1000. Uh, then the kernel value being RBF and linear. Similarly, I want to try random forest with number of estimator, which is like number of decision trees. Uh, the value of those will be one, five, 10. Okay, so this is just a dictionary that I create. And then I can actually run my random forest using this code, uh, not my random forest, but, but my grid search CV using this code, with, using this code. So what is this code? So this code, try to iterate through this dictionary. So we go through each model, first of all, for every model, we try all these parameters. And what is the model? Model is this, okay? And by the way, I, I'm also creating a, a pipeline because you, know, you, you need to scale your data first. So here I'm creating a sklearn pipeline. So pipeline is, Step one is scale the data. Step two is use the model to train. And in grid search CV, I'm using uh, five cross folds. So what this will do is like, if you have 100, 100 samples, 80, like one to 80, it will use for training and 20, it will use for test. In the second iteration, it will use 
1 to 60 and 80 to 100 for training and then 60 to 80 for test. It will do this for all five folds and then it will average out the score. I have another tutorial on uh, cross validation. So go watch that tutorial again. That tutorial is also a prerequisite. So you need to have all these concepts clear in order to work on this project. And if you don't have those concepts clear, you can pause this video, go to like search in YouTube, a uh, code basics, machine learning tutorial playlist, try to find cross validation tutorial, look at it and you will get an idea. After I train uh, using each model using grid search CV, I am appending the scores here in a list and then I am creating a data frame out of it. So my data frame is telling me this, that SVM is giving me the highest score you can see 84% logistic regression is performing well random forest is not that good and within svm the best score is given by these parameters so if you have value of c being one value of kernel is linear then you get the best score so now i have all this based estimator okay so see Let's see what is this based estimator. So if you look at my based estimator for SVM, for um, linear regression and for logistic regression, which is here, I got this based estimator function, a based estimator. Uh, basic, basically that estimator is a train model. And now, See, what we did, if you think about this, this loop that we ran, we, you might have noticed, we use X train, Y train here. So there's this concept of training data, test data, and validation data. So here in this for loop, when I have X train, internally grid search CV will split that into training and validation set. And I'm using this validation set to decide the performance of these models uh, so that I can hyper tune my parameter. So for hyper tuning parameter, I'm using validation test and to uh, taste the performance, eventually I'm gonna use X taste. So you can kind of get a difference between validation set and the test set here. Okay, so now I have the X taste. See X test, Y test I have not used yet. So I'm going to now use that, okay? So when you do best estimator, for example, SVM, it gives me the SVM, um, SVM model, which gives me the best performance and it has the best hyper tuned parameter. And when you do X test, Y test, you get 90% score. So see this 84% score that you got was on validation set. Now I am testing on test set. Okay, now let's try random forest as well. So that is giving me a horrible score actually. So of course I'm not gonna use random forest. And there is logistic regression, which is giving me 92%. All right, now you would tell me, should I use logistic regression or should I use SVM? Because when we ran a cross full validation, SVM gave us the best score. But when I'm running it on X test, Y test, logistic regression is giving me best score. Now there are, there is no one answer to this. There are different practices that people follow. Some people say, okay, X test, Y test gives me ultimate idea on how my model is going to perform in the production and therefore they will use logistic regression. There are other people who will use the grid search CV score along with the X test, Y test score to get a feel of which model they should deploy. I will personally use SVM because SVM performed best when we did cross fold variation on five different data sets. And also during X test, Y test, it still performs good. You know, it's like 90%, 90 and 92% is not very, very much difference. Different, 
uh, but you know here it gave me like four percent more accuracy so i will use svm you can use logistic regression as well i mean there is no like one definitive answer uh, to this question all right so now that we have decided we are going to use svm i'm going to store that into my best classifier so my base classifier is this it's a trained model and now I'm going to use, just to give you an idea, I will use a confusion matrix. So if you have followed my machine learning tutorial playlist, I think some of these tutorials, I, I talk about conf confusion matrix, which you should be aware about if you are not, again, go watch that tutorial playlist first. So confusion matrix will tell you basically like, you know let, let me plot that so this confusion matrix is okay but it's not visually very appealing so we can use a seaborn uh, python library to plot confusion matrix in a nice way so it's the same grid by the way it's just a fancy visualization what this visualization is telling you is this so let's print class dictionary so that you can get an idea on what what this is trying to tell you. So Lionel Messi is zero and Maria Sarapova is one. So let's look at zero first. So the y-axis is truth, the x-axis is predicted. So if you look at this diagonal, it will tell you on how many samples our model predicted correctly. So when you see seven here in zero, zero, so diagonal is zero, zero. So seven times, out of our 42 taste samples, seven times it was Lionel Messi and it predicted it to be Lionel Messi. And if you look at this column, it's all zero, which means for Lionel Messi, it, it did not make any mistake. Okay, too good. In the case, let's look at this case. Uh, when the truth was three, so when it was Serena Williams, on one occasion, so this one means on one occasion, it said it's Maria Sarapova. So on that occasion, it made a mistake. This 11 here means, see 11, the x-axis is four. Truth is four means it's Virat Kohli. So 11 times it was Virat Kohli and it actually said that it is Virat Kohli. Okay, so you kind of get an idea on the uh, confusion matrix. Now it's time to save our model to a file. So we are going to use joblib. If you don't have joblib installed, if you write this line in your Jupyter notebook, if it is not installed, it will install it. Okay. And if you run this, all you need to do is uh, the base classifier you supply as a first argument and the second argument will be your the name of the file. So I'm saying, okay, it's a pickle file, save model.pickle. And then I'm also going to save class dictionary because these, these numbers will be useful when we write Python Flask server. So I do this. And if I look at my folder now, so let's look at the folder. So see, I got these two files. So class dictionary is nothing, it's, uh, it's just a JSON object. Okay, so class dictionary would be this. Okay, and if you look at saved model, it's, it's like a binary encrypted file, don't worry about it. This model we will use in a Python Flask server to make our actual prediction. So at this point, the job of data scientist is over. Data scientist has built a very good model which performs around 90% uh, accuracy or 90%, it gives 90% score. And at this point, data scientist will go and hand over this pickled model and this class dictionary.json file to engineering team and say, hey, engineering team, I have this model. Can you guys incorporate into your software application? An engineering team will then write Python Flask server and the website, which will do actual prediction. So in the next tutorial, we are going to build the Python Flask server. 
Thank you for watching.